So uh, this is kind of a redo of something we did in another video where we we had a tandem A-frame and we had uh, more crews here. That meant more gear, more Vortex parts to make uh, a tandem A-frame where we had a rigid member uh, of the Vortex across the top and we had two A-frames. Uh, this time around, we're simulating uh, just one crew and just one standard Vortex, what you get with a standard Vortex, which you can't do that tandem A-frame. In order to do this, it has to be, uh, it's going to be a, a bipod or A-frame monopod gin pole combination. Um, and so the guying is a little bit more uh, labor intensive uh, when we, we rig that way. Um, but let's just try to do like a 10,000 foot view and talk about like what's practical <laughs> versus what's kind of like out in left field when it comes to like doing rescues and stuff. Uh, we're kind of on the on the verge maybe we're a little bit beyond practical maybe not i don't know um let's try to paint a picture of where this might be ap applicable uh, so our rescuers have managed to gain the high ground the high point and maybe this could be a confined space like a vertical entry confined space and our, our confined space let's just say that it could be down this way so if we look down with the camera uh we're packaging our victim right there uh so there's no way else to get them out other than to hoist them up and through our first directional frame, which is the gin pole. But it's not over, it doesn't end there. Like we have to transition from the tippy top once we get them out of the space and then maybe a waiting ambulance on the ground on the opposite edge. And so that's where our standard A frame for the second high directional comes into play. And we have to land them far out. And so it's not just a, a vertical hoist through a, a bipod monopod combo, it's a vertical hoist through and then uh, an offset system that we have to, you know, send our package out and away. Um, we're only going to be using single loads, uh, so no rescuer is going to have to attend the litter. There's no need for that. So quad guy on the gen pole independently, and then we added a fifth member to that uh, gen pole in the form of the Aztec to bridge it to the front compression member uh, A-frame, and then life safety ropes down the opposite end. So the whole thing, if you look at the whole thing, it's not gonna wanna move fore or aft, so it's very stable and secure. Uh, we have to secure the feet from going anywhere, so we took advantage of lashing and frapping on the gym pole uh, here and here, um, so very stable. And then we Aztec'd out the gym pole and brought that more in so it's more upright, so it doesn't wanna slip out. Because if you look at our angle or gym pole, um, ideally I'd want this gym pole to be more kind of straight in, uh, but this is okay. I know the resultant forces are gonna be here, not so much along the, the compression member, but it's a, a single person load um, and we're okay with that. The blue is gonna be our belay for the hoist. The red is our main working line for the hoist. Uh, standard high directional, artificial high directional change. There's no Aztec in here. We don't need that. We're gonna raise this whole package up, swing the litter in to our frame and then lower out on both the main and the belay, drop the litter here. And once we're here, we're gonna reconfigure mode. So it's no longer gonna be a simple uh, main working line that's ground-based with a topside uh, independent team belay. We're gonna derig our belay and, and untie this from the litter, and this is gonna become a static tracking line. And then with our main working line, we're gonna pull everything in and make a skate block. Since we're manpower limited, we only have six people on our crew. Um, so we're gonna have two operators doing all the ground-based uh, control work down below. Um, one victim or patient, um, one cameraman, and uh, two basically edge tenders up here kind of manipulating that litter. Okay, so the lay line operator is just gonna trail on the maestro. Uh, very simple, we're only going 15 feet up. And then the sky hook winch is going through a, a butt block through the back side of our uh, frame and they're taking uh, on red and once they're there they're gonna wrap that rope around the uh, the winch and then we're ready to hoist and then we have a tender who's just gonna be minding it uh as we come up and gabe you're ready for up right okay ready, ready for up on the sky hook I'm gonna start coming up towards you and hit this yeah i'm gonna push him out a little bit Stop! Let's push him out yep. and hold him out. Okay, we need to get this head up a little bit more, yeah. so but without hitting this rail. 
And we can't come up anymore because we're already up. So we need to pivot his head yeah. in, right? So a bit more. There we go. Nice. Okay. And now we're going to transition to down. Okay. We've made it through the gin pole. We need to go down. And now we're going to pull this in and guide it down. And Jeff, since we're already teetering, what we can do is just de-rig the belay from the maestro all together. And let's have you up here too. So, okay. So, okay. Down. Going down. All right. Okay, watch the feet. Okay, Gabe, get on the side here. There you go. Nice. Okay. Nice, easy. Watch the feet. There we go. All the way down to the ground. Perfect. On the ground, slack. Okay, now we're gonna transition. Okay, so now we have them on the ground. We're gonna uh, manually just shift the litter so feet are coming out this way. So it's gonna be feet first. And hand me those, the maestro and the beaner. Let's get that out of the picture so it's not in our way. And then we can untie the blue from the bridle. So this is the one really good uh application of a interlocking long tail bowline so now we can untie the blue without having to untie the red as well once we do that jeff if you want to take the blue and we're going to go all the way down to that red uh bollard and we're just going to tie a tensionless hitch okay this was the belay now we hard tied all the way back down you can see the tensionless hitch way out there um so we're fixed as this main working line came back through and it's attached to our, our bridle we're gonna take some out and redirect this into our pulley right here and then we skate block into what's gonna be the track ging line the track ging line so this is a two tension well, it's not a two tension system. It's a skate block tracking line hybrid offset. Um, it's going to be an independent self belay. Uh, so the belay is going to be at the package trailing on an ASAP. Pre rigged Highline carriage kit that we can adapt to tracking lines or skate blocks. Um, it's just two petzl reeves lashed together with a whole bunch of options here. Um, this is going to be our independent self belay that's going to be on the tracking line. Um, and this is going to be for nothing. This is for Highline. These are also for Highline applications. So this is just extra stuff that's already set and pre-rigged in this that we're not going to use. Okay, so we're on the track skiing line. Uh, this is going to go down this way, so the belay needs to be in place. So independent self-belay with an ASAP. Just like that. We need to attach this to the rescue package um, and we're going to attach it. There are a bunch of places we can attach it to. The easiest way to do this is just to attach it to the, uh, the ring knot, the, the yoke, the long, or the long tail bow line right here. So right in there, done. Okay, so tracking line is done. But now we need to put in the skate block. So if we look how this goes up, this line, as it comes out, it's going to need to branch onto to this. And it looks like a spaghetti noodle mess right now because all the stuff we're rigging here is going to shape up once we pass through. Uh, it'll look a lot better. So let's see what that looks like right there. Okay, and now we're ready to push this up and lift it and forward. We had a discussion on the critical point test, so if we look at this with a keen eye, um, since we don't have interlocking or long tail, double long tail ball lines, uh, if the ring knot here, the yoke failed, then we lose the package altogether. And um, it's just uh, kind of rescuer's choice. Just do that critical analysis, to try to figure out what's the likelihood of this actually failing uh, and then back it up. So we can back it up uh, fairly easily uh, by hooking a carabiner into all this and then pressing around above the knot on the same line. Now that doesn't protect uh, anywhere on, on the rope uh, above the knot from failing, but we don't need that. Uh, it's just the actual yoke itself is, is the one critical point on this whole thing. So um, a lot of ways to skin the cat. Um, so this just adds extra redundancy. Is it necessary? 
you be the judge. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna do it here just to show you that, like, okay, we thought about it. If there's anybody on the team that's uncomfortable and has identified that there's a critical point that could fail, that would result in catastrophic loss, then we'll back it up. So this is a, a nice, easy way to do that. I think we're good on red. We're going to ease them out and turn them. Perfect transition, I'm happy with that. It was nice and easy. And now it's all gonna be uh, on the ground team to figure out how to float this um, far enough away from the face um, just to be able to be safe, so. Okay, so now you can see it shape up. Independent self belay on the tracking line. We have our skate block, which is way back there really, coming through another uh, directional and then tied in. So. Uh, hybrid uh, tracking line blue skate block red with some redundancy to protect the ring not from failing with just a simple crusik and a carabiner uh, optional uh, but good call and we do have to clear this building a standard skate block won't do so we need a hybrid skate block tracking line hybrid the alternates would involve uh, more ropes so this is really the most efficient way to do it so this is our skate block control uh, the uh, Skyhook, uh, Harkin winch, um, and then should we lose control, the ASAP will provide for a backup for auto locking because the Skyhook is not auto locking. And then Amcus is our control for the tracking line. Um, no backup on this. Um, it's just uh, dealer's choice. We feel comfortable being able to to mine this without having any kind of backup system or auto lock, go hands free. Um, we want these to be undirectionals um, as they come up straight back all the way through paradirectional splitting uh both systems back edge is yours ready to lower ready to lower what ready to lower thank you lowering on red keep your arms and legs inside the ride at all times On the ground, slack. Make him on the ground. <laughs> 